exist in Europe, in places like the Basque Country or Galicia, where people started paying attention to the fact that there were many members of the speech community that didn't have the language as their mother tongue. So these were individuals with little or no home or community exposure to a minority language, but who instead acquired it through immersion or bilingual educational programs, revitalization projects, or as adult language learners. However, when we started studying uh, new speakers, we thought that we had to expand the concept and consider other kinds of new speakers. So maybe immigrants or workers that travel and have to work in other countries and have to then learn the languages of other countries. So basically we concluded that the notion of new speakers might be a, a good um, concept in order to explore how uh, language communities are changing in the contemporary world. So if we have, if we make a, a kind of overall uh, assessment of how um, contemporary conditions of language are changing, we can more or less go through different points. One is that migration and mobility are more common than, uh, uh, than in other times, that international politics, international economy, the media and cultural trends are more and more global rather than national, that uh, the cyberspace is changing the usual context where we use uh, language and, and actually it's changing uh, the, even the, the very public space where the standard languages were uh, legitimized and were also controlled by the publishing industry. And also that um, tertiarization and the new uh, and the new economy have a strong linguistic component so now uh, in all the countries where the tertiary sector is higher what we are saying is that the majority of the economic activity is somehow linguistic so this means that economic interests of a language change that there is a loss of public control on how language is used and that the conditions of agency of nation states to maintain their monolingual public spaces is less and less. And also then that education has increasing uh, challenges to meet in terms of people who move and people who speak different languages um, everywhere. So basically this was uh, our idea is that um, the notion of a uh, new speaker as uh, a basically a multilingual, somebody who has to use uh, socially uh, different languages and then has to appropriate and make these other languages their also their own languages. Um, this notion helps us make more complex the possible investments people may have in different languages. It's not just a matter of national identity. So there's also the economy and there's also the instrumentalities go together. And so this notion may also help us to relativize ethno-national ideologies of language, uh, ideologies of correctness and the connections between language and territoriality. And also in the case of minority languages, it also helps us uh, a lot to, to see that actually minority linguistic communities do not should not be tied to a, a dream of monolingualism, but actually depend a lot on multilingualism.